Hello everyone, I have a bit of spare time tonight so I thought I would play around with my plaid stencil by Lawn Fawn. I'm really excited to open this one and give it a go. I've got a bunch of Distress Oxide inks and some regular Distress inks as well to play with tonight. I will probably also give this a go with the Lawn Fawn inks at another time or when I'm making cards in the future, but I thought I would just get out my Distress inks tonight and play with some colour combos and see what we come up with. So I'm not going to be making any cards tonight, I'm just going to be doing some backgrounds seeing what colours work nicely together. So I've just cut a bunch of cardstock. These should all be about four by six inches. So they fit the smaller cards that I've been working with lately. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's give this a go. Okay, so here are my stencils. I'm sure you have all seen them before. We've got one with skinnier lines and then another one that has some thicker lines of two different widths from what I can see. They are a little bit smaller than my four by six cardstock. It would be cool if it was a little bit bigger for bigger backgrounds, but I think this will do just fine for some of the things that I have planned anyway. So let's give it a go. I've also got some washi tape here with me so that I can stick these down so that they don't move and I've also got all of my blending brushes right next to me. So yeah let's get our first color combo. So these are the colors I'm going to play with first. I'm going with some picked raspberry, Victorian velvet and worn lipstick. Thought it might be fun to play with some pinks first. Just got a bit of washi tape on my table there. I'm just going to use that to hold my cardstock in place just so it doesn't move too much. I'm going to stick this down. I'm not sure why I'm drawn to the pinks first tonight. I figured I want to play with color combos that would suit every occasion. I thought, you know, why not start at the beginning of the year? Occasions for the beginning of the year. We'll go with something that's kind of a bit Valentine's Day-like. No, no, that's a long time away. But I do want to just get, I guess, a bit of a catalog of different backgrounds and different ideas. So I'm really not sure where to start. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and go with some Victorian velvet first. I'll start with like a middle color and I think I will just color all of these ones. When using Distress Oxide inks, I do tend to go a little bit heavy handed and my colors do turn out pretty bold. If I wanted to go lighter and not fill these in, I guess so dark or so bold, I don't know if that's quite the right term for this, I would probably use one of my foam blending brushes instead. I don't know. I, this is the first time playing with it, so I guess I will see what my preferences are when I am done here. I haven't had much of a chance to play with this Victorian velvet colour yet, so I actually really like it. It's a really nice colour. When I bought it, I actually got some Copics that are kind of in the same colour family too, so that I can use them for my cards. And I've used the Copics, but I haven't used this ink yet, and it's really pretty. So before I started this video, I asked on Instagram if there was anything anyone wanted me to talk about in particular while doing this, but everyone just seemed happy to, um, I guess, just know what color combos I'm using and just to watch what I'm doing. So I don't have too much to talk about tonight, which is kind of good. It'll make this video a little bit faster. <laughs> Okay, so I have done one part of this so far. Now, I don't know if I should do the same color. All I know is that you lift it up, you rotate it 90 degrees. They're pretty self-explanatory. They're not very complicated to use, but I'm really wondering what color I should go with. Maybe I'll change it up and use a different color, maybe warm lipstick, and then I will do all the skinny lines with my picked raspberry and we'll see how that looks. What I've noticed about this is that it's not like tedious work, but this is a little bit of a workout. <laughs> there's there's a lot of um, a lot of blending in this, but I'm really excited to see how it turns out. I'm actually a little bit worried that I've done the wrong thing and that maybe you're only meant to use the big stripy one once and then like the skinny one twice. I don't know. Maybe I should have rewatched the video. Here I am saying it should be easy. <laughs> now I don't know what I'm doing. We won't know, right? Unless we try. So give this a go and see how it turns out. I'm also really keen to try this on coloured paper, not just white paper as well. I feel like that looks really pretty, especially if you're going for like tone on tone for like a subtle plaid background. I think that's going to look really good. Okay, so we're nearly done here and I guess we can lift it up and see if I've done a big whoopsie <laughs> or if it looks fine. Let's have a look. Okay, it's not too bad. 
I'm probably going a little bit heavy-handed and that's why it's getting a bit blotchy in those areas. Uh, I will wash that off in just a sec. I will just get this one done first and then I'll wash wet stencils and go on to the next colour. Um, this is very typical for me though. Look, as, as I said, I'm very heavy-handed. I do find I get less of this blotchiness if I use my ink blending tools. Uh, the foam one so I might get them out as well and we'll see how that goes we'll just keep playing with this and see how it goes so this is at least fairly easy to see where to line this up because my ink is nice and dark so I can see right through the stencils which is nice and handy I'm keen to see how this is going to turn out because this page is going to look quite full I guess with all of these colors and going with all the stripes I do like all these pinks together I do feel like they're very pretty Okay, let's see what this looks like. I'm really keen to see this with the skinny lines in there now. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm feeling like maybe the pinks are all a little bit too close together. As in the colours, not so much the, <laughs> the spacing. Um, you know what, we'll do one more. We might just uh, write this one off as a trial and see what happens when I try some other colours next. You all get to learn with me as I go along. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look see. It is pretty cute. Not gonna lie, it's very cute. Let's pop that off the tape. So let's have a look. So like I said, I am quite heavy handed and that's why all those little things are happening there. Laugh off it. Um, I like it in the sense that I can see that there's really cool patterns in this. I do feel like maybe my pinks were a little too close in color tone. It'll be interesting to see when I take a photo of these tomorrow to pop up on Instagram and everything what this actually dries like. I probably can just go a little bit lighter in general, um, not so heavy handed. I might get my other tool out so that I'm not tempted to go a little bit too heavy with these. I do feel like it definitely needs both stencils um, because you get the nice thick lines going one way and then the other way maybe I didn't need to do the thin one twice but I guess because I'm using so much pink with this that that's why it's looking a little bit crowded maybe if I bring in some other colors we'll see a bit of a difference so let's have a go with some more colors okay we're back not that you notice I'm gone with editing but everything is washed and now I'm going to give a new colour scheme a go. Now here's one that I really wanted to try was some purples and orange because, you know, I love Halloween. I really want to get some cute plaid patterns for every occasion. And I just want to see how this works. Okie dokie. So we'll start with the lightest colour first and then move on to... I have a good feeling about this, but I don't know how it's going to work. I'm maybe going to try to be a little bit less heavy handed this time. But in saying that, I am using regular Distress Inks, not Distress Oxide Inks. And I really do feel like that makes a difference because the textures of these inks are very different. The Distress Inks are very chalky and I'd say almost like more heavy and liquidy. I don't know if that makes sense. If you use Distress and Distress Oxide Inks a lot, you might not what I'm trying to get at here. These just are a little bit lighter. They feel thinner. <laughs> I don't know again if that makes any sense but there's just a very different feel about them. I actually have a lot of distress oxide inks because I do love making my own backgrounds. I don't have a lot of um, distress inks. I feel like a lot of the distress inks come in these little ones and not in the big ones but that just might be me and the fact that I haven't looked a lot for them because when I think ink I think I, I get another big one in the distress oxide. I've only got like maybe two sets of the little ones and heaps of the big ones. So I don't have a lot of these to play with. I would love some more. I'd actually love to get all of them in matching colors to the big ones that I have, just because the textures and the way that they, I don't know, feel on the paper and look on the paper is so different. But I do love these colors and I'd love to be able to use them in different ways. Okay, so let's take that off. See, I quite like that. It's not so, um, I don't know, I feel like I could be more heavy handed with this and not get that blotchiness because of the difference in the inks. But I do quite like that colour, so let's give it a go. We will do the other stripe. I just had a look at my Lawn Fawn um, paper pad for reference, the plaid ones, and my plaid paper is, how would you put it, like heavily decorated. Like there is not much white in them anyway, so like plaid is a full-on pattern, so I shouldn't feel so bad if I don't have a lot of white showing. Maybe that pink was just not quite working because all those pinks, like I said, were probably just too close in their tones um, to really give us the, 
effect that we're after. Anyway, we won't know unless we keep trying, right? So, <laughs> take two. I do quite like how this is turning out. I think maybe I'm going to be a bit more of a fan of my Distress inks and maybe I should get some Lawn Fawn inks out too and play with them rather than just do all Distress Oxides like I'd planned in the beginning. If the Distress Oxides are going to be a little bit tricky, maybe I can use them for some of the lines, like maybe the thin lines to cut through all the others when if I do them last. But I'm really liking the way these inks are working. I love that you can still see the pattern. It hasn't totally blocked it out. Not that this one has totally blocked it out. You can still see where they cross over. Again, I'm going to be more interested in that when it um, dries completely and has overnight to dry. Okay, so we're done with the orange here. Let's take that off. I feel like I'm liking this better already. Yeah, oh my gosh, yes. Like, how much better is this looking? Get that out of the light a bit so that you can see. I am quite liking that. It is very orange. I don't know what it's going to show up like on camera. It's looking quite yellow there, to be honest. I'll give this a go with our purple and see how this turns out. I'm really hoping this looks cute because I love Halloween so much and I really like the idea of using these stencils year round. It just gives such a great, easy background. Like this really isn't a lot of work. It's actually quite a lot of fun. And they're very straightforward too. It's not like worrying about placement of snowflakes and little stars and things like that on some of the other ones. It's just it fills in the background where it needs to and then it's done. Gosh, I love this color. Look at that purple. It's so pretty. I really do like this. I might just pop my lid on you. This uh, stencil seemed to be incredibly popular. I know that it sold out on the website that I got my new lawn form release from, from Hobby Hoppers. It sold out very quickly. And I've noticed that every time I ask, you know, what's your favorite from the new release? What are you most excited about? what's in your order that you're excited about receiving. And a lot of people are saying applied stencils. So I think it was very clever of Lawn Fawn to release this because it's just really pretty. And their plaid paper itself, especially the, um, the Remix one, their most recent plaid paper pad, they are just really beautiful. And I'd actually, I wouldn't mind trying to recreate, I guess, the color scheme with these stencils because yeah, I've just been loving using their, their papers. They're beautiful. They make great backgrounds. And now to be able to make our own as well is just very clever. Okay, should we hope for the best? Okay, I'm really liking this. This is turning out very cute. When I take photos of this in the morning, I'm sure it's going to look really good. Just let me just line these up. I mean, I guess you don't really have to be so concerned about where you're lining things up and you can just put it wherever, but I do kind of just want it to be, I guess, in the middle, just so that they look evenly spaced. Not that that really matters. You could probably even do like multiple goes of this little of the skinnier stripe and just move it up a little bit so that it fills in the background. I don't know, just more things to play with, I guess. I'd love to say I've got all the time in the world to play with these things, but I'm really only got the time now because the little ones are in bed asleep. <laughs> I'm really loving this purple. I will, it is wilted violet. I do love this, such a beautiful color. I feel like I am still pushing fairly heavy on this and inking up fairly frequently. Whoops, it is just <laughs> the way uh, these inks work differently, I guess where it's not looking so intense as the Distress Oxides. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of this one. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. Okay, yes, that is very good. I'm much happier with this one than I was with the first one. I will just give you a little peek of that one. Again, it's very intense. The colors are very similar, but going for very different colors on this has definitely done the trick. Like I said, I am filming this at night, so my lighting is not great. I don't have any fancy lighting except the light in the ceiling right now. So these colors aren't quite showing up as beautiful as they are in person. So I will make sure I take a lot of photos. Let's play around with this just a little bit, hey? Okay, so I thought it would be fun just to play with this a little bit while I've got it here. I would love to see what it looks like with some little purple flecks on it. Let's see if that's actually pretty cute. Two of them. And maybe a little bit of, what do you reckon? Maybe the blue gold might look good with this. And I'll leave this to sit and dry. And then in the morning, we can come back and have a look. I do love that. It just adds a whole other layer, I guess, of dimension or just prettiness, <laughs> if that's the thing. It's very cute. Okay, so I'm going to leave this one and we'll check it in the morning.
I am now back for number three. So for this one, I really want to use some teals and pinks together. I feel like that's a really cute combo. So I might go with maybe my mermaid, my pink flamingo, and maybe my fresh lavender. We'll see how this goes. I feel like they're going to be really cute colors. And if you can see over here, <laughs> I've grabbed all of my little distress inks and my lawn fawn inks because I'm just really liking the way that they feel. So let's grab my purple, pink, and maybe my blue brush, although my blue brush is very temperamental, so we'll see how that goes. And for some reason, I've pinned down the smaller one. I don't think there's any rules for using the bigger one first. I just feel like the little one is like the finishing details. So I would like to use the bigger one first. So let's see how this turns out. I do love the lawn form colors. I probably have a bit of other colors on these brushes as well, but hopefully it will still turn out really cute. I am also really keen to alternate colours with some of these stripes as well and see how that turns out. Or maybe when I turn it I shouldn't even use purple. I might use pink when I turn this one over. And then use blue for the stripes. So we'll see what that looks like. I guess what's cool about these is that literally every time you turn it 90 degrees you can change the colour and have heaps of different colour combos. I think that's why... I'm at least feeling just a little bit like, oh gosh, what do I do with this one now that I've got my hands on it? It is straightforward to use, but there is just so many color combos. I know that I'm probably going to go overboard or do some wacky color combos that don't quite match. So I guess that's another reason for doing this video was just to get my head around things. Okay. So we're done with the purple, looking beautiful. Those stripes are gorgeous. Now I'm going to go with pink this time and see what this does. Now this one is still probably very heavy with the other pinks that I used. So I've got to remember to go fairly light. There's going to be a lot of distress oxide on this brush. I do like these colours together though. They're very pretty. And I guess part of the trick with this is to go light enough where you can see. I mean, you can go bold and have really bold lines in it if you want, but I really do like that effect of being able to see through the lines to the other colours. I would love to know what kind of colour combos you're planning to use too. I'm just going to, I guess, cover some that have been in my head. But like I said, there's going to be so many. And I'd just love to know what, what themes maybe, the cards you're planning on using a plaid background for? I mean, you can literally use it for all of them, but I'm just nosy. <laughs> I would love to know. And do you find videos like this helpful? Is this helpful at all? Me talking to myself? Oh, wow. Okay. That is lovely. Oh, I mean, even in my light this late at night, you can see that that is very nice. Okay. Let's add the blue and <laughs> hope I don't destroy it. Pop the little lines on. We'll start with one go of these little lines and then I guess we'll see if we need that second. I feel like we will only because I do like the way it fills up the space. It doesn't quite feel complete if you leave one out. Now we're going with some mermaid. And I'm going to go really light with this because my blue brush for some reason just holds on to all the blues that have ever touched it. <laughs> I really do need to clean these brushes. I'm pretty sure I say that all the time. It's just who's got the time. I'm really excited to see how this color combo turns out. I think that they all complement each other really well. It would probably be even better if my brushes were very clean to get those like true lawn form colors. This one's a bit fuzzy from using it on lots of paper. So I'm getting a little bit on there. Getting little bits of like old paper on there. It's a bit annoying, but. Okay, let's see how that turned out. Oh yes, that's very nice, except for me smudging it like that. I'll wait till it dries before I keep doing that. Don't know why I insist on doing it again after smudging it. Okay, I really do like these colors. These are turning out very nice. So this was the plastic flamingo, fresh lavender, and the mermaid. Okay, let's run these stripes the other way and give it a go. 
Okay, coming up on the last of this one, so we can see how it turned out. That is beautiful. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Very, very pretty. I love this. This is my favorite so far. This is really cute. I think it would look good with some white gold flecks over this too, so we might as well do that while we're here, right? White gold is by far my favorite on these. I use it for so many things. This is, yeah, very, very cute. Beautiful. I'm going to leave that to dry. I'm going with something a little bright this time. I thought maybe this color combo might look cute for Easter. So we'll give it a go. So I've got merman, carrot, and sunflower this time. I think I'll go with merman for like the main color in the background. And this time what I haven't done yet is alternating the color of the smaller stripe. So we'll do merman for all of the big stripes and then switch between the two for the others. Okay, so starting again this time with my foam tool, I'm just going to, I guess, dab it and twist it a little bit to fill in these lines. This particular sponge that I grabbed has already got a very like greeny color on it. I think it might actually be have a fair amount of cracked pistachio on it. So that is going to slightly affect the color, but it looks like I'm kind of getting some kind of gradient. So that's not, not too bad. Okay. <laughs> gradient is there, but it doesn't look too bad. And I have gone a bit low with this one, but that's okay. We'll go going this way and see what we think of it. I think the only problem with this technique over the brush is that my hands get so tired so quickly. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, very beautiful. I do love that. So now let's alternate the thin lines. Oh, it kind of matches the tattoo. <laughs> let's have a look. Okay, so we'll put it in the middle of the lines we've got already, trying to line them up so that it's not like a wonky line through the middle. Losing my washi tape, that's right under my nose. And we'll go with, I guess, yellow first, and then see what happens when we switch to the orange. Okay, so yellow done, looking very cute. Now let's switch this over and use some orange. Let's try the orange. Okay, let's give that a go. There we go. I feel like you can't quite tell, maybe not in this light at least, that there is a difference between the orange and the yellow at this point, but I do quite like that. That is a very cute pattern. Okay, let's move on to another one. Okay, so for this one, I think I might go some greys and blue. So I'm going to go with Hippo, Manatee, mm, maybe Merman too. I like these colours together, so let's see what comes of this one. I will use my black for Hippo and Manatee. So let's start with Manatee. I want the background to be grey and just see what this does, hey? Okay, it does look very light and like it hasn't done much until you take that off, then you can see. So then let's switch that over, do it this way too, and then add the other colours. Okay, both sides are now done. Okay, I quite like that too. It's more of, I guess, a subtle colour 
than some of the others that I'm using, but that's why I'm doing this tonight is to trial out all the looks. Okay, I'm gonna stick this down and go in with my other colors. Going in with my darker hippo. Okay, so there is my hippo. I don't mind this one. It's probably not my favorite one, but I'm about to add some blue to it. We'll see if it picks up a bit. I guess this would make a really nice background for maybe the desk for a little office scene or something. It's nice and mostly neutral because I haven't added the blue yet. It'll probably change in a minute. Um, I don't know. I guess it's just a little plain for what I'm used to making. Okay, so let's see how that turned out. Oh, there we go. That's not so bad. Again, it's still a little bit on the plain side, but it's not that bad. That, I think, is going to make a nice background. I think we will add some white gold flecks to it just to jazz it up a little bit. Okay, let's have a look-see. I feel like that definitely adds a little bit more to it. But yeah, I mean, we'll wait for it to dry. Check it in the morning see what it looks like. Okay, so I've only got two pieces of cardstock left, so I thought I might do another one that I feel like would be really good for Easter. Some merman, freshly cut grass, and fresh lavender. And this time I'm going to go with, I guess, different colours for these thicker stripes. And then I might, I don't know, I might try a rainbow for my last one and see how that goes. My hands are getting a little bit tired. <laughs> it is getting fairly late. But I just couldn't wait for another time when my kids would be asleep where I could get this done. Okay, so there we go. Merman first. Flip this around for some freshly cut grass. Let's see if I can use the same tool. Probably should have. Oh no, there we go. Green's working all right. I'm always amazed at how well the lawn fawn inks do for things like this. I guess because they're not... Um, I don't know, maybe not advertise quite as much as, you know, like a blending ink, like the Distress Oxides and things like that, but they really do a great job. And I know obviously that, you know, the videos from Lawn Fawn, they will be using their inks a lot. I know that they also use Distress Inks and things too, but I don't see many others, other people using just Lawn Fawn inks for things like this very often. But then, I mean, I don't have a lot of time to watch everybody's videos, but I don't know. I just feel like they're a solid contender. That is very, very cute. Okay, now for some fresh lavender for my little stripes. Okay, so my phone died <laughs> while I was doing the other purple stripe. So I'll quickly do this one and then show you how cute they look. Okay, so let's have a look. There we go. I really, really like this one. I think this one might be my favorite. Those colors have just turned out really nice together. That is really cute. I am so happy with that one. Okay, so I've got one left to do. Okay, so for my rainbow, the last one, I'm trying to get my head around how I should do this. I'm thinking maybe one stencil using warm tones and the other using cooler tones and alternating colors. So we'll give it a go. I have no idea how this is going to work out or if it even will, but um, we'll just see what happens. So I'm going to start with my plastic flamingo and I'm going to do every third one, at least with this particular stencil, um, the gaps are a fair bit bigger. Actually, no, you know what? They're even bigger on this one. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Enough room to not hit the other ones that I don't want to. So who knows? This could work out. Okay. So there we go. We've got some pink. I like that, that the, the width of these stripes is different. I'm going to get two of every color and they're all going to be a different size. So I feel like that worked out nicely. So let's try some orange. I think my hands are getting a bit sloppy now that it's so late at night. 
Oh, I already kind of like this. This is looking pretty cool. Now, this one's going to have like a total of six colors. So I don't know if it's going to look a bit overboard with the colors. You know what I'm like with rainbows. I can't be trusted. I go overboard all the time. And I'm going to use my blending, my foam tool for this because my yellow brush is a bit dodge. I guess the only problem with using the foam tool is that it is wider than all of those bits of stencil. So it does cross over a little bit. Okay, so let's have a look, see. Looking cute. Turn it and give it a go this way too. Now I've got to get my head around the colours. It's going to be a bit confusing going this way. Start with pink again. I might just start at the top like I did last time. Okie dokie, so those are okay, so now I'm going to use my cooler tones for this one. Doing the same thing, this time I'm going to use Merman Fresh Lavender and we'll go Freshly Cut Grass. I just realized I've done the wrong order. That's okay. Just means I'll get, that's okay. We'll see. Okay, so let's see how that turned out. Pretty cute. Honestly, not as happy with it as I had hoped. I think maybe the yellow and the orange are too big. I would actually really love to do this one again, but have it the opposite. Have the cooler tones for the larger stripes and then the skinny tones and the warmer stripes. I think maybe that would work a little better. But yeah, there we go. There's another one. Rainbow I think is going to be tricky. Rainbow is always tricky for me. So anyway, I'm going to leave this one to dry and then we can check them all in the morning. So here we are the next day looking at the papers that I had made once they were dry. As you can see some of them are really cute and I'm happy with most of them. There's only a few that I maybe wasn't so happy with how they turned out but I have ideas for how I can make them a bit better next time I give it a go. I'd love to know which one was your favourite and I'd love to know was this video even helpful. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait to try these stencils out again. I have a video to show you later in the week using one of these backgrounds. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.